In this video, we're going to introduce the classical wave equation. Now this video serves as an introduction to a unit that is all about introducing Schrodinger's wave equation as the core fundamental equation for quantum mechanics. Just like Newton's second law, F equals MA, is the core uh, equation for classical mechanics, Schrodinger's equation really is the core underpinning of quantum mechanics. And in order to understand the plausibility of Schrodinger's wave equation, we need to understand how waves are treated classically. So kind of think about the logic here, right? Um, if, you, if you know that particles can have wave-like properties, then there must be some wave equation that can help define its properties and calculate its properties like energy and motion, right? So we have to have some understanding of how waves are treated classically and we can you know, somewhat build Schrodinger's equation or at least understand Schrodinger's equation better on top of that understanding of how waves are treated in classical mechanics. So when I say a wave, specifically with uh, quantum particles, really small particles, we're really treating them as standing waves. And what a standing wave is, is just if you think about a wave that's anchored at two points. So in this figure, I have a wave. These uh, blue uh, columns here are like anchor points for the wave. And you can just think of a wave that's oscillating, right? Back and forth is vibrating. Uh, back and forth, right, throughout time. And that's basically what a standing wave is. And for waves, keep in mind that waves are delocalized, right? Unlike particles, which have a definite localized position in space, waves are more delocalized, right? So instead of having a you know, definite position, they're usually described by what's known as a shape function. So this describes its shape, you know, how long is this wavelength going to be, how um, frequent or what's this uh, frequency going to be. This shape function defines those wave properties um, throughout time. So it's a, a function of position and time. And the wave will also have a wave velocity, which this is the speed at which that wave is oscillating. So with these two properties defined, we can build up a what is the general wave equation. So we have a general wave equation and it looks like this so you basically have on the left hand side the second derivative of the shape function with respect to position is going to be equal to one over the square of the wave velocity times the second derivative of the shape function with respect to time Right. So this is a second order differential equation. Now, if you don't have any prior experience with differential equations, that's fine. We're going to walk through the steps of what we need to do with this guy um, for any context. But uh, just appreciate that this is an equation that relates the change in its position of the shape function to how it's changing over time. So you can kind of see how you could extract different properties from this equation, really just by looking at this relationship between the second derivative of the shape and the time, right? So this is just general wave equation from classical mechanics. So in order to solve equations like this, we use a uh, technique known as the separation of variables um, as a technique to solve here. So separation of variables, right? Because we have a shape function that is a function of position and time. What we do with separation of variables is we assume the following. So if we consider our two variable function, what we do is assume that it can be broken up into a product of single variable functions, right? So um, we're gonna have one function for position and one function for time. I'm going to call the function of position psi of x and the function of time t. Now I'm choosing psi for a specific, uh, specific reason, right? This is the Greek letter psi. Um, that's gonna be our wave function in quantum mechanics, but I'll get into more details of that in the next video. For now, I'm just going to label this function as psi. So, okay, we've done it. We've, we've um, applied separation of variables to this function of position and time. It's gonna be a product of a spatial position function and a function of time. Right. So now if we plug that in. Right. So let's plug in this guy. Right. So we're going to plug this separate uh, separated function into our original 
differential equation and see what happens. So if we plug it in on a left hand side, note that in this derivative, we're only taking the derivative with respect to position. So that means it's not going to affect this function of time. So we can actually pull that guy out, right? So we can say f of t on the outside, right? Since it's not a function of position, this derivative is not going to affect it, right? So now we're taking just the second derivative of the position function with respect to position, right? So all I did there is since we're only taking the derivative with respect to position, we can just pull out that function of time since it's not going to be affected by the derivative. Okay, right hand side, this function remains unchanged. I mean, this uh, fraction remains unchanged, one over the square of the wave velocity. And then same thing here, right? We're only taking the derivative with respect to time. So our shape function can just come out there. Our uh, spatial function can just come out there, right? And then we're taking the second derivative of the time the function with respect to time, right? Cool. So we separated variables, right? Um, plugged it in back into our differential equation. So now what I want to do is um, in order to um, solve this, right? We want to uh, get rid of this time dependency. And we can really do that by choosing a function in a very particular way, right? We have the function of time over here. If we choose a function on the right hand side that will give us the same function back as a, as the second derivative then we can actually get rid of the time dependency so what do i mean All right so let's uh let's consider the following function so consider the following time function right so let's say we um you know, consider our function of time as one of our trig functions, right? Let's say we do cosine omega t, where omega is gonna be our angular frequency here, right? So this is the angular frequency of the wave, right? So we're gonna use this as our function of time. Why are we gonna do that? Well, we know what our trig functions, right? If you take the second derivative of this function, you're gonna get cosine back, right? First derivative is going to be omega negative omega sine omega t. Second derivative is going to be negative omega squared cosine omega t. So we're going to get the original function back if we do this. So um, so let's do this. Let's plug this in, right? So plugging in. So we're going to plug in this function of uh, time back into our differential equation. So now we're going to have cosine omega t. And this derivative of the spatial function remains unchanged. dx squared is equal to 1 over the wave velocity squared. Still got our spatial function out there. And now we're going to be taking the second derivative of cosine omega t. Right? With respect to time. Okay. So, like I said, you take the second derivative of this guy, you're going to end up with negative omega squared. Right? And you're going to get that original function back. Cosine omega t. And on the left-hand side, everything is remained unchanged. Cosine omega t. Second derivative of the spatial function. Okay, so if we look at this guy, right, we've got cosine omega t on both sides. So those guys can cancel out. And so if we bring everything down, then we end up with psi of x dx squared is equal to negative omega squared over v squared psi of x. And I'm just going to move this, uh, what's on the right-hand side, over to the left-hand side uh, to have everything equal to zero. All right, so we got dx squared plus omega squared over v squared psi of x. That's going to be equal to zero. Okay. So what we've done here is gotten rid of the time dependency in the classical wave equation. So now we have a, an equation that is time independent. 
right? We have a time independent wave equation um, that we've derived just from uh, the original classical wave equation, right? So this wasn't meant to be a full class in wave mechanics, just a general introduction into what we can do with this classical wave equation. What we're going to do in the next video is take this equation that we've uh, that we've gotten here in this video and use it in the next video to justify and motivate Schrodinger's wave equation for quantum mechanics.